Hi, my name is Greg Edels and this is my wife Dory. Hi, and we're foodscape.tips. We'd like to show you what we're doing in our garden, so... Hope you enjoy it. Yeah. How big is the garden? Uh, this whole backyard is pretty much our garden. Uh, we utilize just about every bit of the space. And it's about 60 by 80 or so. Um, the whole lot here is only one eighth of an acre, so we've got basically half of the yard. It's one sixteenth of an acre. We're growing just about as much as we could shove in. We have heirloom tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. We have basil, um, flowers and nasturtiums. We have marigold. We have geraniums. Geraniums that we planted this year to see if they would grow. They came up really well. We have bell peppers with the geraniums bell peppers yeah. with the geraniums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also have um, okra and cucumber here. Uh, along this line we've planted a few different things like radishes and green beans and peas and Asian beans. Um, Asian beans are neat because they grow like three feet long and we also have almost every kind of hot pepper you can imagine because Greg likes Yeah, I like my peppers. Things. We've got Anaheim's, Poblano's, uh, banana peppers, uh, jalapenos, serranos, Thai hot chilies, habaneras. Did I miss any? I don't know. I think that's about <laughs> it. We also have catnip and more nasturtium mixed in with our squash this year. We have yellow crookneck and um, zucchini. We also are growing beets, corn, cabbage, dill, and thyme, strawberries. Don't forget the chamomile. Chamomile and um, just Go. more beans. We're zone seven, um, Arizona where we live so we're in desert mountain range we are at 5100 feet mm -hmm. so we have low water um, and cool weather so we have a shorter growing season than most places so we start early in a greenhouse and or inside and try to get those plants going so that we can plant outside right after the end of that first frost and cover our plants if you need to. as far as generally in the summer season it's either blazing hot or it's monsooning on us in the, the mid to late summer months. Mm. Uh, we look forward to the monsoons a lot because that helps uh, with the watering yeah. naturally. I would say the reason that we got into gardening was because we enjoy gardening. Um, but we became more involved in our gardening as, as years went on, as my health started to decline. I was diagnosed with RA a couple of years back and we just needed to do something different for our family to be healthier. It's just fun and we enjoy doing it together food that we get at the store, you know, genetically modified stuff, uh, the pesticides that they use, mm. the taste of the food isn't even that good, you know, from the produce compared to what you can grow in your garden. Uh, the cost of that food is going up more and more, and I'd like to push people into that uh, relationship with food again and where it comes from and appreciate how hard it is uh, to grow quality food, but also to love it because it really is a lot of fun. It's a miracle to watch it happen and to watch it grow. When we're talking about organic gardening, uh, you know, we refer to fertilization and bug control. Basically. For fertilization, we use fish emulsion. That's about all we use, mm -hmm. really. And then as far as bug control goes, we use pretty much only like an insecticidal soap, like. We use Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap, and we use neem oil. We're using less neem oil because we find that it does burn the plants, uh, especially if it gets applied too liberally onto the plants. It stunts their growth. Um, it's great and effective at killing the bugs, but you've got to be really careful with how you use it, only spray it on the bugs. So we find that the best scenario of, of bug control here is to be directly involved in you know, daily going through and picking the bugs off the plants, keeping the plants well groomed. I mean, that's true organic gardening right there. We are involved, you know, one, two, three times a day we're in the garden just checking up on the plants, making sure that they're good. What we do for compost is we have our own composting bin. We take all of our leftover vegetables and different things that we don't use in the house or just the parts of the vegetables we don't use and we toss all that out here. We have chickens who um, help break those things down, eat things, and that all gets turned. And once or twice a month, we come out here and turn this whole thing and cover it up for a couple weeks, get it all wet, allow the chickens to dig back through it again. 
Um, right now it's a mess because the chickens have obviously dug it out, but um, that's kind of our system. How it helps our plants grow is because it has the higher nutrients, because we can also make compost tea out of this. Um, and we use that sometimes on our, our plants as well. And we um, basically just add this to our dirt at the beginning of the season. This will be used for next year. We're not really using anything out of it right now, just allowing it to break down. The food that we grow, we like to eat it. Um, and what we can't eat- A lot of it. A lot of it. We do eat a lot of it. We try to preserve it if we're not going to eat it right away. Um, we give it away to our neighbors, we give it away to church members, or we also trade. We have um, a few other people around us who do garden um, and friends and family, so we'll trade with them for other things. I'm trading corn with her for pumpkins and apples. And we also give about a third of it to the bugs because... Yeah. What do they say? Plant a third for yourself, a third for the bugs, and a third to share? Yep. That sounds about right. Yeah. We want to preserve it in a lot of different ways. We do dehydration. Mm -hmm. We do canning. We do blanch and freeze some of the stuff that we do. But mostly just canning and dehydration. And is eating it. Deal. And eating A lot it. of it. I, I think that by far the biggest challenge that we have in the urban farming environment is bug control. I mean, aside from the big pain in the butt of in, in this high desert soil here where it's mostly clay and rock, just to get to the point where we could do this, we had to go through, till it down five or six inches, remove all the rocks, add six tons of sand, uh, five tons of composted mulch, a whole bunch of horse manure, 40 pounds of gypsum, uh, 15 pounds of blood meal, and we had a previous load of mulch from the previous year. All of that got uh, tilled into the soil just to get to that point. Now that was a real pain uh, to do to get set up to do it. But now that we're actually in gardening mode, uh, maintaining the health of these plants, particularly the squash plants, uh, and removing the squash bugs daily, sometimes two, three times a day, uh, that is the biggest pain uh, of trying to keep everything healthy in here. We do that every day. The most important thing about gardening for me and, and the thing I enjoy the most about it is that I get to do it with my family. What I think I most enjoy about growing food mm -hmm. and farming is sharing it with other people. Uh, I love when we bring people over and show them the backyard and they go, oh my gosh, you guys are crazy. And it's really not that insane. And that's, that's what fascinates me, I think, is that so many people think that what we're doing is insane, but this is what people did like, I don't know, now like 60 years ago, it seemed that people have forgotten how to grow their own food. That's what I want to show people and that's what I enjoy doing the most. I think it's important to shoot for the goal of being able to eat everything you grow and grow everything you eat and be as self-sufficient as possible to get to that point where you have enough to eat and to feed your family off of your own resources in your own yard. Mm. I think it's really important as well. I think that having um, those things at your fingertips, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, oh, do we have an onion? And oh, look, I can just go get one out of my backyard. I hope that, that growing food in your backyard and in your front yard and around your property is, is a growing movement. I hope that people do become more connected with the food that we eat and how to grow those things and, and that you can do so, this sort of thing yourself. It's it's very fun, it's very engaging for, for your body and, and your mind and, and for your soul and I would say for your family as well or just as individuals um, to know where your food comes from, to be able to be a part of growing that and seeing it grow and there's something that, that's very heartfelt about seeing that you put the seed in dirt and out comes this plant and then there's fruit that you can pick off and take into your home and eat. Um, it, it's very rewarding. I've seen a huge response to what we're, what we're doing. Uh, we've, we were more committed to it than we ever have been, but introducing a camera to mm -hmm. capture what we're doing and then share that has been like, just absolutely incredible. People are mm -hmm. commenting on all the stuff we do and they, they love what we're doing and they say they're inspired mm -hmm. and they want to try to do what we're doing as well. Um, many times for the exact same reason. So I think, yes, uh, by necessity almost, it's becoming a growing movement and people are realizing how important it is 
uh, to be engaged in their own health and, and their own food supply. Mm. If you're just getting started in this, uh, I, I would recommend mm. that you join our community. Uh, I'd also recommend that you just find your local community, your local nurseries uh, that can get you started. There's usually really friendly people and any other kind of uh, agricultural you know, like schools and that kind of stuff. Just connect with as many people as you can to get as many ideas as you can. Thanks for watching, and if you really enjoyed what you've seen today, please click the link below and check out and see what else we're doing. Bye!